Fatima, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, uh, thank you, Musa. Uh, this is Fatima Mohammed from Algeria. I'm very grateful to be um, here today to share and to learn. Thank you so much for our Berkeley uh, Middle East host, the amazing ladies who have shared their journeys with us today, and um, for everyone in uh, amongst the audience. Um, I always like to introduce myself as the dreamer action taker because these two have definitely shaped my career. Uh, but if going into details, I'm the CEO of Better Ever After, certified happiness life coach and MLP master practitioner, um, Amazon best-selling author uh, of Tear the Veil and an author of two more books and an audio book, international speaker on different stages, including TEDx, Wikistage and Hot Prize, and um, someone who just loves to share the journey of love, of happiness, and pro prosperity, and so many levels with women and with everyone on this world. Thank you again for having me, and I look forward to share more with you. That's an amazing introduction, and I'm really personally excited to uh, have your thoughts, uh, being you are an Amazon uh, best-selling uh, writer, and uh, you are a TEDx speaker also. Let's involve Fatima to share her thoughts. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you, Sharifa, for sharing your thoughts on LLP. My intervention is kind of the pre-story of what Sharifa just did. So that would have been really nice if I went first and then she went slick because it makes for a great continuation. I'm a firm believer that until we empower ourselves, until we find everything within ourselves, then we can power it and then we can pass it on to others. And then this is one of the quotes I included in my First book, everything starts from within. Um, love starts with self-love. Care starts with the care of them. Like, and then power starts with the strength uh, within. And then this is why today, my, my uh, intervention today is called The Power of Being You. Now, when I, when I saw the, um, the title, the theme of today's conference, um, the word global and businesswoman, these two words were not uh, among my glossary of achievements or potential while growing up as an Arab woman. Not because I had a lack of imagination or a lack of self-belief in myself, but because I was not taught, I was never even like led to believe that there were options at my disposition in the first place. And I'm not the only one. I believe that there were so many girls that they grow up with this very boxed and limited um, uh, way of um, ed I don't know, education and teaching that instead of teaching them that they can fly, and yes, ladies, we can fly, it trims their wings. Both family and school um, and corporate later on do play a major role uh, in this. I, I would call them co-conspirators, but then um, we don't stop them. Um, I, know, I remember when um, growing up, I was always asked this question, uh, what do you want to do when you grow up? What, what is your dream job? We were always told that we can have jobs. No one told us that we can actually create them. And that's something that uh, for me, I had to actually um, find out on my own. And it was while working for a corporate, sitting in an auditorium full of um, other um, teaching, um, teacher teaching staff, most of which were uh, ladies. And then there was a guy taking the stage and hurling threats at us and telling us that if we didn't like the horrifying way they were treating us, well, the market was oversaturated with um, teachers, with employees who would jump at it. And that's when I was like, hmm. Uh, I took notice of the, like, the horror on everyone's faces on the silence that had befell the room, and then on the like the quietness, every rebellious voice grew fainter and fainter. And that's when I realized I don't want to work for someone like that. In fact, I actually want to be my own boss. Well, I didn't know anything about being my own boss because, again, I was not taught how to be my own boss or how to be someone who owns their own business and who gives and caters to other people's needs. And when I told everyone, including myself, that, you know, I'm out, uh, I don't want to have this job anymore. I remember also like the, the look on their faces because no one dared say anything to me. Uh, it was a mixture of shock, terror, uh, panic, doubt, and also pity. I was like, what are you going to do? And probably for a very long time in my life, I said, I don't know, but I will figure it out. 
And the not knowing part did last for some time because I don't want to over romanticize the whole thing. You know, I was just sitting, I walked and then there was a tree and then I had uh, like a light bulb on it going on like that. It took some time of not knowing, of definitely having doubt. I was not certain. I was not ready for it. And when people ask me, um, what are you going to do next? I just kept saying, I don't know, but I will figure it out because here's the thing. Yes, I was not taught these things, but I knew that I could spend some time learning. I spent the time actually, and I did some learning. I did some searching. I did some self rediscovery and I reconnected with my real old dreams. And that's when I started turning things around. I'm someone who's, who's worked in Saudi Arabia for some time and Saudi, just like um, UAE, they are following in like um, they're doing so much for women. But then the girls I was teaching at that point, I asked them the question, what is your dream? And um, out of, I don't know, out of 30 students, but most of them said, um, well, why dream? It is pointless to dream because, well, uh, the greatest thing we could do is become a cashier in someone else's company. It's like, no. And I took them to the college's walk, wall of fame where um, portraits of these beautiful, talented Saudi ladies hang there. And they have done amazing things in every um, domain of life. You can imagine, just like, just look at them. They were raised in families just like us. They went to the same universities. Well, they were, they lived in the same society. The only difference is that they didn't settle. They didn't take no for an answer. They still went for it despite all of those hurdles in their ways. And they made it happen. And instead of hearing, yes, miss, we can do it, I usually get, mm, but it's too late. It's like, no, love, <laughs> it's never too late to dream. Dreams, goals don't have deadlines. They don't have expiration dates. Uh, like, take it from me. I, I spent my life, I spent years of my life running from one education to the other, from one job to the other. And then one day I had that snap and I thought, okay, no, I actually can do things myself. And as I introduced myself, um, it's been a year since I created Better Ever After. Um, and we are catering now for, um, for customers from more than seven countries around the world. We have speaking engagement. We, have, um, we do consulting, coaching. I, um, I'm writing my books. I have um, interviews on TV, podcasts, and it's working on me. I'm thriving. And I know that others can thrive too. And then this is the kind of education I want us to offer to our girls, be it mothers, sisters, daughters, um, nieces, friends, any woman we cross paths with. This is the kind of education I want us to make available for our women, young and adult. You can be a Khadija, the Prophet's wife, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can, be, you can be Oprah, you can be Lala Fatma, you can be... Uh, Serena Williams, you can be Shalise, you can be Jelena, you can be Khulud, you can be Nada, you can be any one of these amazing, beautiful ladies, and much, much more. Everything you need, ladies, is already deep inside you. It's your uniqueness, and it's the power of being you. Like, that's something no one can match or no one can take away from you. Thank you. Uh, this has been my piece. I hope it has lightened up your path and it would probably lead you down the path of a better ever after of your own as well. Amazing thought. I think this is the starter, you know, main course is still there. So we will come back to you and we'll take a lot of more uh, thoughts about uh, your journey about uh, transforming yourself from an employee to an employee. We'll take some comments from Fatima because she is the happiness coach. So there are so many women in the world which are not, they are not happy with their uh, surroundings. They don't have better jobs. They don't have opportunities to uh, the healthcare and education. I mean, they want to study, but no one let them study. If they, if someone let them study, the study is bad quality. So in all these difficult situations, how can you, what you can advise them how to bring happiness in their life? Thank you, Musa. Now, here's the thing. When people hear the word happiness coach, they um, have Santa Claus in their mind. And they think of someone bringing bags and giving everyone freebies. That's not how it works. But, um, you know, the thing with happiness is that 
it is a choice and it's a decision and it's a, a mindset and it's in the here and now. Do you want to be happy? He, the thing with people is that they wait for everything around them to be perfect, to align for them to be happy. And that's the mistake. Happiness is not a feeling. It's an action. Do the things that make you happy. Now, I've just shared glimpses of my life, but um, I always tell people I've been through all kinds of things. And um, I've been on that, the other side of being that person who's, um, who's negative and who always focuses on these things. But then um, breaking through to the other side, I realized, you know what, I was just, you know, I lost so many years doing the right thing and focusing on the wrong things. So the first thing is shift your focus, ladies. Shift your focus from the things that you don't have yet to the things that you already have, the things that gratitude has a matchless power. Be grateful for what you already have. And then again, what is it that you, um, now, you've just said that people, that, um, that the women who are going through tough times, who have bad education, you can always do something about it. One of the things that make us feel miserable is the same, like, uh, what Nada has spoken about the, um, the the victim mentality and the victim mode that we activate. It's like we think that oh wow we are helpless. You always have a choice. You always have a choice between this and that, between the positive and the negative. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to be to be successful. You can choose to do something with whatever it is that you have. Now, the, th the good thing about being at rock bottom is that there is no lower place to go. It only goes upward. It only goes th the way up. So that's something to look forward to. I uh, tell people, well, what I tell people usually is that shift your focus, practice gratitude, and then build a positive, build a happy routine around the things that you are doing so that it fortifies it. It helps you. Um, what things make you happy? I, I usually tell my clients, Put, do and make a happiness list. What are the things that make you happy? Is it a movie? Is it chocolate? Um, definitely something velvety. Uh, is it being around with a friend? Whatever it is, well, definitely not doing the dishes, not for me. But whatever makes you happy, make it, make it, put it on a list, write it down. And whenever you feel a bit low, try to use it as a rescue. Like run to it, pick yourself up and then keep on moving. Uh, you are the only person who is in charge, who is in control of your state of mind, of your state of feelings. Do not let others um, tell you otherwise and do not let the uh, exterior factors affect that or take it away from you. That's an amazing. So I will put another scenario in front of you. There are some working women. They, their husbands are uh, not working, even not earning. And the top of it, they, they have kids as well. And one of the most important thing is that when they go home, they are the victim of domestic violence. Means husbands physically torture them, abuse them, whatever you can say. Domestic violence is a good word for it. So, yeah. uh, I mean, how they can find happiness when they know that there is... Uh, no escape outside, inside, and they are stuck in the vicious circle. So how? what is your advice for such kind of professional women? Um, domestic violence is definitely one of the, topic, the topics that really hit me hard and I talk about continuously. I've written about them in my books and I usually speak about them as well in my speeches. I, I would like to disagree with what you just said, Musa. There is no escape. There is always an escape. Uh, no one is stuck. The only place you are stuck in here is this place, your mind. This is what your mind tells you. You are stuck here. You're stuck in this relationship. You're stuck with this person. You can always end stuck yourself. Um, I will definitely tell women, work on yourself. Because a woman who's, uh, who's been through an abusive relationship is a woman who is fragile. Her, uh, her feelings are shattered. Her self-worth is shattered. Uh, she's very dependent emotionally, financially on that man. So I, I, this is, this is an, uh, like an advice that I've already given to people and it definitely has worked and I'm grateful. 
uh, that it did, and I definitely would love to share it with, with women. If you think that there is nothing to salvage in that relationship, if you think that there is no redemption for that man who keeps beating you, and it, it only gets worse, especially, I, I always tell women, it's like, um, cheating can probably be reconciled and if it happens once but then the beating always once a beater always a beater he will always hit you again and it all usually gets more violent with time and it moves sometimes from the wife to the kids so if there is no redemption if there is no salvation work on yourself first build yourself up build your independence financially emotionally psychologically mentally and when the time is right quit uh, because there is that is the only way there is definitely there is an escape but first you have to work on yourself and you have to realize that um that man is not everything and that state of marriage is not a, is not even a marriage because it's supposed to be a happy ever after and you're only seeing the misery part and like the horrible part of it and think also of your children because you can because you can still give them and provide them with that safe haven when there is true happiness where there is emotional stability where there is everything that you want but work on yourself first and then you will get there. That's an amazing uh, suggestion to uh, the woman who is the victim of domestic violence. I'm sure that there are a lot of issues and cases I personally feel is, is increasing. You might know that in COVID-19, domestic violence in different countries has increased to a very high level. And the reason is, of course, the, you're sitting at home, you're doing nothing and uh, uh, the financial stress and uh, relation issues are uh, getting all mixed together and uh, increase in domestic violence. Fatma, what are your closing remarks of Sorry. the day? Um, well, um, if I have, if I want to leave you with one golden nugget, it will be to invest in yourself all the time. Um, doing being here today is already an investment, but keep on doing it. This is the one assured way towards always evolving, always growing. And then that's the only thing that we can do. If we stop growing, basically we die, even if we are still moving and um, breathing on this. Uh, so always invest in yourself through these events, uh, invest in the things that really matter to you, um, your learning, your relationships, your growth, your business, your studies, never stop doing that. And then the second one would be to be conscious. Uh, Nada has already spoken about how our unconscious actually reserves 90% of our lives. So be conscious of your choices, of your thoughts, of your emotions, of your feelings. And that's the way you can actually make an, imp make an impact and have lasting changes about your love. Um, I would like to thank everyone um, for sharing um, the, the, the golden pieces that they have done. Um, Berkeley, again, for the invitation, everyone who has tuned in. Uh, uh, in the audience and I would like to keep in touch and connect with everyone on Instagram, uh, on my other accounts, Facebook and YouTube, but mostly definitely on um, Instagram, Coach Fatima. I'll see you there. Uh, I think these are lovely thoughts and Fatima, I would uh, like to have uh, some more conversations in my any other programs regarding women definitely. in your country, um, uh, the motivation, uh, the opportunities about healthcare, education, how like you it. how you transform. So maybe in any other uh, next program, we will uh, sit together and talk uh, more uh, in detail about it. I want to thank you very much for joining us far away and uh, representing your country. And I'm looking forward to have you more in future. Thank you.